What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. This week we are in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. In fact, we're here all month. At the end of the month, we leave for Europe for another great run of photography in the fall. So stick around for that. Subscribe, like, blah, 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 YouTube, so that you get alerted because that should be a good time and we're hoping to film quite a few episodes while we're over there. But between now and then, I thought it might be fun to reach back into the archive, pull out some photos we've already taken and talk about how we got that shot, any anecdotal nonsense, <laughs> any hijinks that happened uh, along the way, and kind of, uh, kind of fill you in on the backstory of some of these photographs that we've already gotten um, in a new segment that I think we'll call Story of the Shot. Before we get into the photography though, I have to say thank you to Aaron and Kim of Handlebar Coffee Roasters for lending me their cafe after hours tonight so I can film this for you. Thank you guys, I appreciate it a lot. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into the photo. So the photo I wanna talk about today is this one right here. Uh, this was taken in the Dark Hedges in Northern Ireland. Um, I had seen this shot maybe 10 years ago, 10 years before I took this. We took this, I shouldn't say I. <laughs> God, you'll be upset. <laughs> it's a team effort. Um, maybe 2005 was one of our first big sort of photo forays to Europe. And in preparation for that, we had collected travel brochures and some other things. And on the back of a brochure, 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 on the back of a brochure for Ireland was this gorgeous little shot, this back page, this little tiny thing of this beautiful street of overhanging trees. And it was just one of those shots that kind of captures your imagination and you kind of get stuck back there. And we didn't end up going to Ireland on that trip, um, but that shot sort of stayed in the back of my mind. And when, uh, when we did our big around the world trip in 2015, Ireland was on the list. And so I made it a point to figure out where that was. Um, obviously with the internet, it's gotten a lot easier than it used to be to find out where things are taken. And this, uh, this spot has been like on Game of Thrones. And I mean, you've sure probably seen it all over Instagram. We hadn't yet. Um, didn't even know it was in Game of Thrones until we actually got there. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we find this place, we go to Ireland, and we're planning to spend, I don't know, maybe 10 days total in Ireland, just do, just do the loop and, uh, and head out. And five weeks later, we were still there and finally got to Northern Ireland and uh, ended this beautiful street. Now, we came in the night before, we had booked a hotel room. There's a hotel called, I think it's the Hedges, Dark Head, the Hedges Hotel, I think that's what it's called. It's right there, it's just off of, just off of this street. And we booked ahead um, just to make sure that we could get there, check out the shot in the evening, and then take it in the morning. So we rolled in about, I don't know, about 10 o'clock. It was late and we got checked in. We had to ring the little thing because the guy had already gone to sleep. Anyway, we get checked in and then we walk out of the parking lot down the street and onto this beautiful avenue of trees. And it's already pretty, well, it's all the way dark, but you can, you know, you can see. And uh, just to kind of get a feel for the shot. Now this is a municipal road. I mean, there's traffic on it, not a lot of traffic, but people drive on it. And at night we didn't see anybody, didn't really think much of it. So went back to the hotel, went to sleep, set an alarm for early, like five o'clock. And I don't think sunrise was until maybe 6.15 or 6.30, but I wanted to get out there, kind of get it scoped out, figure out how we were gonna actually take the picture. Should actually rewind because there's a little bit more to this. So maybe, maybe four days, five days, four days maybe before we got to the dark hedges, Katya said, you know what would be cool? Like we've seen a lot of shots of this street just looking down the road and it's this beautiful, very serene and the trees going over and the road going down the middle. And you know, it's a great composition, but wouldn't it be cool if there was something in it? And we thought maybe we could find a car, an old car or something like that. And Katya said, what if we had a red umbrella? And I said, well, that's no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want an umbrella. <laughs> So we spent three days looking for a red umbrella and you would think in a place like Ireland where it rains all the time that it wouldn't be that hard to find a red umbrella. But it took us three days in like eight towns to finally come across an umbrella that would work. So anyway, that's the story of, it's the story of the umbrella. So we get up in the morning, we go out to this street. And so we walk out the back of the hotel, down the street that leads to the street and then onto the street. And as soon as we pass, now it, it is dead still, not a breath of wind. I mean, no wind, it, not, not even a breeze. 
very still, very calm. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, thank goodness there's no wind because it's still dark. I'm gonna have to shoot this for a long time, you know, long exposure to actually get this thing to work. If there was any wind at all, it would ruin the shot. So I remember thinking this as we're walking towards the street. And as we turn onto the road and pass the very first beech tree, now these beech trees have been there a long time. In fact, since like the late 1700s. Um, as we pass the very first beech tree coming into the street, all of a sudden from nowhere, this tree just starts to shake. Like, like there's a tornado in it. I mean, it's just blowing, shaking. Katya and I looked at each other like, what is going on? Nothing else is moving, not the bushes on the sides of the road, not any of the other trees, just this one tree. And then it, as soon as we're past it, it stops. We kind of looked at each other like, what? What was that? <laughs> and, and went on with the morning and didn't think a whole lot more of it, except that that was just super weird. Well, come to find out, there's like a, there's a ghost story to this street. There is a story about some woman and there are multiple versions of it, but that people have seen her floating down the street and when she gets to that last tree, she disappears. Now we didn't see any lady, but we saw a tree freaking out. So we're just gonna count that as a ghost story, I guess. It's a weird story and you know, something that doesn't happen every day. So yeah, we'll count it. Anyway, okay, so, so we get to the street and First thing I notice is that these trees aren't as close together as they look in the shots you see. In fact, they're gap pretty far apart. And so the challenge in that is if Katya is close enough to me for me to be able to communicate with her in the walking, um, it's too close. I would have to shoot it too wide and you just see these big gaps between the trees. So we had to opt for a long lens. In fact, I think I shot the shot at maybe 200 or a 300 millimeter. She's, she's way out there. I had to back way up to the beginning of the street. Anyway. So we get this figured out. It starts to just kind of mist maybe lightly. Not rain, nothing was really getting wet, but you were feeling, feeling the water in the air. So I get set up in the middle of the street. I'm looking down, Katya gets down there. She opens up the umbrella. We kind of get the thing worked out for the shot. And then as soon as we get ready to start actually taking pictures, we see lights coming, excuse me, lights, <laughs> lights coming from the end of the street and a car comes down. It's still like five o'clock in the morning, but only one car. So, car, and we run off the street, let the car go by, and come back out. Now keep in mind, because it's dark, autofocus isn't working, and I usually operate under manual focus anyway, so I've got my eye up to my magnifier, looking at my LCD screen, and I'm manually focusing, and I've gotta level everything and reframe the shot, and as soon as I get everything ready, and I'm about to call out to Kati to start walking, more lights come. So this happens maybe a dozen times. In between each time, we have to run off, run back on, reset everything back up, level, composition, get Kati into position, yell walk, get the focus, the whole, the whole nine yards. So each time we're only getting maybe one or two photographs off. And each time it's just making those little tweaks of exposure or trying to up the ISO so that I don't get any blur. Anyway, extremely frustrating, but we, we did it a dozen times or so and finally felt like we had the shot that we were happy with and we went back, had breakfast, checked out of the hotel, and then decided to do one more drive in the car of the street. We just thought, well, let's just stick a GoPro on and we'll just drive down. You guys wouldn't believe this. There must have been, I don't know, 60 people, cars all along the road, people in full costumes, like Game of Thrones stuff, like people everywhere. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have believed it. At 5.30 in the morning, we had it to ourselves. It was amazing. It was quiet and gorgeous, except for the ghost. And two hours, three hours later, mayhem. Like you never could have gotten any good shots during, anyway. That's, so that's the story of the shot. So I'm going to now show you the shot. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the road because I know I took some with, uh, without Katya in. So let's take a look at the road just as the road. So you can see, it's a pretty shot, it's nice, you know, serene, it's got, you know, nice lines, whatever. But then if I show you the one with Kati in it, how good is that? Oh, that red umbrella, the little bit of a step, the symmetry, all the leading lines. I love this shot so much. Anyway, um, that was a lot of rambling in a single take. 
but I'm gonna take it because it's really, really warm in here. The sun's been beating in all afternoon and I'm, I'm literally like sweating. I'm probably sitting in a puddle. Anyway, this was the first episode of Behind the Shot. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, like, unsubscribe if this was awful, whatever. Just the YouTube stuff. That's it for me. I'll see you next time.